everyone to the uh, video from our recent event down to Yigarup area dunes and the areas around that vicinity. Um, so this is uh, our first camp up because uh, we drove down there Sunday, sorry Friday night. We camped up closer to it. Uh, that's my rooftop tent from uh, Canyon Off Road and PPD. Love it, had a great experience with it. Love the fact that uh, it takes like two seconds to open up um, and then get straight in if you don't want all the other thrills about it. Uh, so it was great to be able to experience that. This is where we stopped off to get some fuel up and uh, you can see I've, I've put fitted some stuff to the outside of it to make it a little bit easier uh, to carry some stuff uh, to get access to my recovery gear. This is some of the scenic you know, forest driving, I just wanted to include a little bit of this footage because I think it's just beautiful, this area of um, down south. Uh, so about sometimes the shade, sometimes in the sun gets, makes it a bit, bit uh, hard to see. But yeah, it's just really nice scenery to drive through. Um, now, I cut off a fair bit, but this is where you come to the main uh, dune that you're about to ascend. Uh, so this is where you drop your tyres down to to lower PSI. Uh, this is the first of our group to go up. Uh, so it uh, did a fantastic job in a, in a standard Pajero, an unraised, unmodified suspension. This is me going up that same, very same gene. Um, nice, that's actually, uh, there's a car that went up before us that didn't quite make it. So he went down and all of us managed to get up first go, so that was really exciting. So this is just a different angle of me coming up with my car, uh, taken by one of the, the lads there, so thanks for that one. But, uh, you can see it coming up, you can see the uh, softness in it. A bit firmer when you get up the top there, and the last, uh, the last of us to come up uh, in the FJ there, making up easy, no dramas, but uh, yeah. The, that, that's the first to stand up and um, the right tyres, pressures, it's, it's uh, not that difficult if, um, if it's set up to be done correctly and you get the nice, nice speed. So uh, this is just a little bit of the 360 view from the top. So I, when I drive up, I just do a little pan around so you can see how beautiful and white this whole section of um, this entry point is and then off in the distance you know, the bush area, uh, so I can pan, I just wanted to pan the whole camera around to give you guys a bit of a view from what you see when you come up to the top and um, how everyone made it up first go with no issues, obviously, uh, and a couple of pictures, so that's looking off into the distance from where we were standing and then the cars that uh, were on the trip there with us. Um, uh, so thanks for everyone that came along. That's the uh, mighty tridy there with uh, the tub rack and the roof rack, uh, sorry, the rooftop tent that I, I gave a whirl uh, for the first time off road. This is the steep descent to the beach. So uh, it, was a, it was a good crack because um, this was really well done here actually, but uh, you can see how uh, the Bajero sort of slid to the left there but uh, did a fantastic job of recovering it himself and getting himself moving in the correct direction. You want to obviously face um, down straight into the dunes and try and avoid the, the slide, which will naturally happen, but you know, some people would uh, uh, might go with that and turn too much and you can roll your car. So um, great instinct to be able to just quickly correct that mess correct that and then face forward and drive straight down so that's really good see it's a bit hard to tell from the video but it is actually quite a bit of a descent that you're looking at when you go to to go down so once I make sure they're all down and, and everyone's clear I, I come down this hill so um, it's, it's kind of soft here so you can fluctuate your, your pressures um, depending upon the conditions, like obviously the first entry, you want to be down kind of low, uh, especially depending on your rim size and how much rubber you got to work with. Also depends on how much pressure you need. Um, but you neither want to have to 
be consistently uh, changing them too often as that can become kind of tiresome and frustrating. So this is where we get onto the actual Yigarup Beach. Uh, another great example here where we turn right, uh, I wasn't really, and you can see the slide there by the Pajero, he was trying to get on the um, track that everyone else was heading in. Sort of slid down with gravity and then got himself um, once again, what I would say temporarily stuck, but with no uh, help, got himself straight moving again. I'd uh, at that point reverse back to check, you know, check out what was going on to make sure everything was all good. And um, he did a great turnaround just there with no assistance. Um, and if anything, I messed it up because when I reversed backwards, instead of going straight and staying on the firmer sort of sand, uh, I actually slid down too into uh, towards the water area. You can actually see here um, the vision of my bogging. I've sped it up a little bit for the first portion. But you can see me, I got a little bit stuck. I went into four low and you can see how deep I've uh, then dropped down into the sand. Um, so I'm trying to, yeah, you can see how gravity's dragging me towards that direction. Um, trying to go forward and back and you can see how much she's digging in just by the indentation into that dirt. So I'm trying to reverse backwards to get into that um, harder surface, but in the process I was digging myself a little bit deeper in on the other side of the car from the tire that you can see there. But uh, with a quick um, snatch strap out, we were able to get her moving again. But this was just to show you like, you know, it's, it's not uncommon for these things to happen. Um, you know, this is me trying to reverse back and get it to go down uh, towards the harder surface, which is usually towards the water. But um, quick snap strap and we were out of there. So I wanted to get a video of it, but just didn't get the opportunity. So this is us back on the move, going along um, the whole big stretch of Higurup Beach. So this is, um, and forgive me if I pronounce that wrong. That's, uh, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, please correct me. I believe that's how it's done, but uh, I could be messing it up slightly. So we're going along really well here. Like you've got this amazing sort of scenery. You've got this giant stretch of beach, and this is where the sand firms up quite considerably. So that's why sometimes people fluctuate the tire pressure a bit to, to accommodate that. But I guess if you stuck halfway between um, and then only really lowered up for the difficult parts, um, you, you can pretty much suffice on that rather than uh, consistent changes. Um, so for this, you know, you, you could see it easy here, around 20 PSI, but, or 18 PSI. But if you went down to 15, you'd handle most of it without issue. And then for the real soft stuff, down to 10 to eight, depending upon your rim size as well. Uh, so coming up ahead, we'll, um, I've got a couple of little shots, uh, some views of Yiga up Beach, just some still pictures that I took from the side of my car when I stopped. Um, so you can have a view of how wonderful that, you know, the brilliant white sand is and that uh, beautiful coloured beach to the right. It's just, uh, it looks amazing. Um, it was blowing quite a bit though, so I don't know about fishing off that beach. Didn't see anyone fishing. It was quite empty. Um, compared to Jasper Beach, which looks better for that aspect of it. But yeah, that's a look from behind. So you can see it's like really quiet, really empty, a great place to, to be able to visit. So this is the Warren River crossing. Now this can change all the time. Um, and it's a, this is a great effort uh, by the Pajero there. He yeah, doesn't have a snorkel. Um, thank you for the assistance. We had um, one of the members there to help out with uh, with directions and making sure that uh, everybody got across safely with no one getting stuck or needing assistance through that crossing and um, with good instructions that was that was made possible so thank you for that uh, so this is me wading through the crossing and, and uh, as you can see there getting a bit of direction as to to which way to go to stay on the firmer section not to speed through it, go through it at a nice, slow, even pace. That's why I've kept this at normal speed, so you can sort of get an idea. Don't rush it, nice and smooth, so you don't sink in or spin your wheels and suck your car down. 
Uh, this is a view from our side, so you can see how deep the water is, uh, so you can see what it looks like when you go through it. You don't want to create too much of a bow uh, wave movement with your, when you're going wading through this. This is um, mostly fresh with a tiny bit of salt water as it floods up with the sea, but um, yeah, not that deep. So uh, it's always good to check that area before you go through it, like walk it and make sure it doesn't, the silt and stuff doesn't move before you go through it. And choosing your time and place to go through it is important. So uh, river crossings can be dangerous, but if done correctly, you get through without issues. So this is just a view from the opposite side of the bank, me coming through. Uh, so you can see how, how much we drop down into that uh, section. And you notice how, where we are, um, thanks to the direction that we're going in through a certain section that's even though it looks like we're going out wide into it and then coming around instead of taking the shorter path um, that's where walking and checking the surface is important and we've also as you can see on the front there pretty it's pre-set up our system so that if you do get stuck um, you've got your winch strap and or your snap strap ready to go so that you don't have to muck around with it when you're in the water after the fact. So it's always a good idea to be prepared. So anyway, once we get past that, you continue along the beach for a distance um, before you find the left-hand turn towards uh, where you go up Cow Cup Hill. Um, at this point, I'd, I'd uh, Gone back up in my tyre level, which I probably shouldn't have. Should have just left it where it was. Um, but anyway, uh, because when we did the turn, one, uh, I didn't get enough speed uh, and momentum. As you can see here, this is, you could see I actually was quite deep in that. That's how soft that section was. So it was actually firm on the beach, but really soft there. I actually get to try and get up that section of softness you can see the amount of movement in the wheel and the amount that's flicking off and how deep that the wheels are sinking in um, and you can see the turn there uh, actually was getting kind of a loss loss of traction and yeah you can see look at the deepness uh, the depth that that front wheel sunk into it um, so what i did there is simply let down the tires some more straighten them up lower the pressures down and reverse backwards again and uh, as soon as we lowered those pressures um, I sped this up because you don't want to watch me just lean down tires all the time uh, but once as soon as the tires were down back around where they should be uh, around 10 I was able to get up there with no no troubles whatsoever so it does come down to a lot to, to tire pressure is um, is primarily the reason as long as you got a four wheel drive with four drive low, even if you don't have diff lockers. So this has been going up the second time um, with the lower tire pressure, as you can see, not a problem whatsoever. She managed it without one hiccup. So that's the difference between um, tire pressure. It can make a huge amount of change to whether you succeed or you don't succeed. And as you can see in front of us, what is up ahead, that's Kalka Hill heading right up towards the top. Uh, unfortunately, my camera cut out on um, the ascent portion of it, so I've only got some photos and stuff to be able to show, which is unfortunate. And I hope to be able to go back and get video to actually show you the whole ascent in full. Um, I had to get up there the first time. I didn't quite make it to the first, just missed the first um, tip uh, like where you first go up the first I think it's about 800 meters straight soft sand climb didn't get enough momentum so I had to come back down and go up again second time enough momentum got up so that's that first you know like ascent um, doesn't look like much from these angles but trust me when you look like that downwards you can get an idea as to how steep that is and how soft that sand is and you've got a few of them you go up one ascent and then you've got a uh, hill, then you go down and then you have a really uh, heavy ascent again, followed by a flat surface and then another ascent and a, a sharp left-hand turn. So just to give you a bit of a, an idea, I've thrown some of those pictures in there 
uh, for you guys to see that um, what it's like and the, how far you actually go up. Now this isn't us, uh, I borrowed this picture um, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. And that's a view from up the top, looking back down at the beach and that's how far we actually go up. So once you get off the uh, hill, um, you can put your tires up a little bit more. They've placed these rubber mats here now, um, just off the, the rest of the Cal Cup hills. They've got these rubber mats that make it a little bit easier to get off. Uh, that um, I believe is has been more recently placed here, so makes it easier to get the rest of the way to the top. But uh, I think the three ascents that we did were probably harder than this little section that we just went through there. So. Hey, but um, that's that's Kalkup Hill. Then we, uh, to find our night camping spot, we had to go through a few different areas to try and find somewhere to get back towards uh, Jasper Beach, which involved a couple of river crossings. Now, these, this one here is like nice and easy, so there was no dramas with that one. And uh, had a good guide for a lot of these um, river crossings, which was uh, made a lot of difference. Here we can see another one um, up ahead where we just sort of try and go around the majority of it. And if you're, the more you get experienced at doing these, the more you can read the terrain and assess whether or not it's uh, safe or you need to get out and walk first. Here you can easily see, we can just go around. You, you can tell by the other tracks that that's possible. Um, and also with those river crossings, you know, going at a very, very slow pace uh, to go through them is, is more important. So this is uh, another recent crossing and I'm just waiting my turn. You can tell how dirty my car is at this stage. It gets a lot worse. Uh, you can see all the mud splatter from some of the river crossings already. Um, but I just wanted to show you, that's the river crossing just up ahead. This is one of the deeper ones we go through. Um, so there's our first car that's just uh, he's made it through. He went through no dramas at all. Just creeping along. So you want to um, uh, idle along at a, and be very gentle with your throttle and just go nice and easy through that because you're trying to run across the top of the surface of the crust of the, um, of the river crossing without uh, digging it in by turning the tyres too deeply. So I left, I did speed that up a little bit. So he's actually gone through that very, very, very slowly. Uh, so the second car goes through. Um, Steve did a great job in his um, D-Max. D -Max did a great job. Once again, we had all pre-set up um, stuff so that if we did get uh, stuck at any stage, that um, we were set so that uh, we could be recovered without having to fiddle around, especially in some of the sections where the water got quite high. I think I've got a vision coming up from outside of the car where you can see the um, depth that uh, one of these get to. So the last thing you want to do is try and reach around underneath the water and put in um, your, your, your connections to, to uh, recover yourself. So I believe at the end there's a little bit of a dig Gets, gets a little bit of a spot to the right, so I try and avoid that on my crossing. So I do a, uh, I do my crossing here. So as you can see, uh, even though this is sped up, you can see there's hardly any ripple in front of me on the car. Uh, I'm really trying to be really gentle on the throttle. You don't want to push too hard or uh, on the throttle. You just want to let it idle through. So this is where for low and um, if you've got diff lockers, you engage them and you just idle your car through and let it try and just smoothly run across that surface. And uh, by reading your uh, terrain and so forth, it helps with identifying whether or not this is going to be a crossable or uncrossable path or whether you need to walk it or not walk it. Um, and how, uh, as you can see, we got a little bit of direction there in front of us. So this is just uh, the vision from outside to give you an idea of uh, what it looks like from the outside um, and how we uh, wade through that section. And I've sped this up again 
So understand that this is not real time speed, this is slow speed. So, uh, and you can tell by some of the indentations here prior to going in, you can tell that uh, the surface is a little bit firmer there. And as you're going through, you're, you can see the depth. So I, there's sections where it sinks rather deeply and I get up over the, uh, towards where my wheel, uh, sorry, the um, steps are. Um, it sinks over those steps at one point, um, but managed to, to, to find the right route with a bit of guidance to get out and uh, uh, without getting any dramas. So just maintaining that slow, steady speed, letting the car idle through with low revs and revs um, and not uh, being excessive with that accelerator really makes uh, all the difference with these types of crossings. They are, they are dangerous, um, so should be done very carefully. Um, and preferably with uh, someone else there to assist. So that's just to give you a bit of an idea of what it looks like. So uh, I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, I think it's just us continuing on. I was gonna cut that out, so, cause that's just, but you can tell by the um, surface here that I'm sitting in. I don't know why it's still sitting on this. I think maybe I've got something coming up, but I wanted to point out, you can see the surface there is quite firm. So you know that uh, you get a bit of an idea that the, the river surface shouldn't be as bad. Um, and in addition, the terrain further up type of trees. Yeah, that's right, I hit it. We have another water crossing. So another similar one, uh, but not as far, uh, not as wide, sorry. So just to give you another example of another river crossing. So yeah, the they can be tricky, so always be prepared for those sort of things and if preferably having a backup car is a great idea. Um, but yeah, reading that terrain, so I think, uh, um, you know, looking at whether or not you have certain trees further up ahead like this, you can see we're getting into more um, from more shrubbery style area into a bush with, with white gums and trees, uh, less likely to find these types of river crossings. Um, whereas in these type of areas, we can see the, uh, more like what I would describe as, personally anyway, what I'd describe as more wetlandish style bushes, um, then you're gonna encounter more of these type of um, situations. So as you look further ahead, you might be able to see, okay, well, eventually it looks like it's thickening up in the bush and there's going to be less of those, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, we did actually do quite, quite a few of these, so they were great uh, to be able to experience um, because they help a lot with uh, confidence and learning and uh, getting that um, help in the instruction there and having another other vehicles make it easier for you to go uh, to follow the line through and to have the confidence to do it yourself as well with um, a little bit of direction from the other side and they're actually set up there you can see the lights facing me so they're actually set up with the winch and I've got my snatch strap out but it's hanging through my driver's, uh, sorry, passenger side window, just in case I got stuck here towards the end, um, that I was able to be uh, grabbed out, but made it through no drama. So uh, that was not an issue. So this is just that, I think um, the deep crossing, that, that major one that we went through, the very last one, I think that was the worst. Uh, yeah, this is the deep one. You can see it's right over the, the wheel, sorry, the, um, uh, sidestep so you can kind of tell even on a car with a two inch lift and stuff she sinks in pretty deep in certain sections but like I said you can tell by the bow movement even in a sped up video that we're moving really slowly and you're trying to be really gentle with your throttle so it's all about um, that sort of control and using those sort of features to your, to your advantage 
uh, and being prepared for the worst case scenarios as well. So yeah, you can see the car up the front. So that's that same river crossing you just saw. Um, and I chose to go a little bit to the left here. You can see I've dropped in deeper, but main maintaining um, kind of steady movement because the uh, previous car went to the right and he sunk down a little bit more. So I tried to move to the left, but uh, hey, anyway. So we finally got to our campsite for the, for the second location. Once again, I love my setup. The Canyon Off-Road Rooftop Tent. As soon as we parked up, I pulled it out and had it set up, ready to go to sleep in within no time at all. Uh, if you want to put the windows up, that obviously takes longer, but um, when you just want to get in and go to sleep, it's great. This is in the morning, um, so you can see a beautiful spot. You can tell how dirty my car gets from all the red, red dust from stuff. Um, and that's the exit out onto the uh, beach road down to Jasper Beach. And this is the side of the car. So this is us driving along Jasper Beach itself. Now Jasper Beach is, is amazing. Uh, this is at low tide, high tide. Uh, I didn't go down, but the lads went down at light, high tide. I waited up the top while we waited to, to suss everything out. But this is at low tide. So you can tell how much water actually comes up by the colour difference to the left and right. But this, this beach was, um, is a fantastic one, not only for the scenery and the forward driving, you can tell by the surface that uh, it's quite firm as well. Uh, so if you get down here at low tide, it's fantastic for, for being able to go along for a nice drive. Um, there were sections you couldn't get past because uh, it wasn't the lowest it could get. So we got stopped at, um, I think, both ends, I think, by some rocks that I think you can get around when it's very, very low. But uh, we got stopped and we decided to turn around anyway because we did want to go, uh, you know, we still had limited time. But um, this is sped up as well, so we're just uh, going along here. You know, some pictures of Jasper Beach because Jasper Beach, uh, I think, uh, has some of the best examples of... Um, what you, what I would say is uh, a perfect, so, yeah, see, so there's some of the rocks that uh, pop out. Um, this is some of the best example of beach that you would find to easily identify gutters and holes, even if you don't have a lot of experience. So here, yeah, some pictures. So that's just looking out my window. You can easily see some breakers further out. And then there you again, breakers further out and a real deep trough running just beyond that before it breaks on the shore. Another picture, just the same sort of scenario. That, and there's another one. They, you can see the deep section between the two uh, white peak waves. And there, there's a big hole right there. That's beautiful. So close to the shore, yet easy access to it. So you can, even uh, as someone that's not familiar with it, you can easily see those things. So that's a perfect fishing beach and uh, easy to spot those places where other beaches you might go long stretches with none of that. So um, can't wait to go back and actually fish there um, and test those gutters out. So this is just a short video footage of some of the sandy full drive sections as we driving out, but we went towards um, out towards, uh, eventually, we did a few other tracks, but eventually we had an up at, I think it's Stepping Point. The name will, will pop up on the camera shortly because I took a picture of the actual place we stopped at. And it was beautiful scenery there. Um, and there was camping sites as you went off that area um, in, the, in the trees with shades and sections. Yeah, Stepping Stones was the name of the place. Um, so that was the area around that we four-wheel drive. This is the picture from um, the Stepping Stones area. You can see the coastline, the rocks. There's a nice little pool down there. You can see, just see people, but there's a nice little pool down there. You'd probably be able to cast off into that and really get some uh, nice fish in that area. So that'd be another great fishing location. But uh, yeah, there is camping spots that can come out that are perfect. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get a great shot at this. I did this crossing once and we missed it on the camera. And on my second attempt, uh, on the first attempt I made it, second attempt I got 
all the way to that spot where the video stopped, then a reverse back went over it, and unfortunately cut out before we got the me going through it. Anyway, we're back on the normal surface, uh, pumping up the tires, and I'm taking some pictures to show you how dirty my car got, the amount of mud that was stuck underneath, um, and all over my vehicle was insane. I uh, actually got a picture coming out where I tried to clear some of them. Yeah, look at that pile of mud. That is just mud from the rim just around the outside to get to, uh, you know, where you would access your tyres. So you can tell, I think there's a shot. Yeah, look at that underneath how much mud that I flicked up as a result of going through some of those areas. So. Uh, thanks to PBD and Canyon Off-Road for their tub rack and the rooftop tent. I thoroughly enjoyed them. This is getting my car home air spotless and totally clean because there's nothing like uh, you have to get all that mud and stuff off. So uh, big thanks for everyone for coming out to, for that weekend. I enjoyed it and I hope to see people out there again soon. Cheers. And finally, just uh, like and subscribe. Got more stuff coming up shortly too as well. But yeah, thanks guys.